Hello, how you doing? This is Officer Wright from East Brunswick Police Department, Community Policing Unit. I'm here to give you a tour of one of our police vehicles. Right here is one of our marked vehicles. As you can see, it has police on it, East Brunswick Police Department. It has a lettering for a supervisor. This is one of our supervisor vehicles. We have three different types of vehicles here. We have a marked unit, we have a ghost unit, and we have what's called a blacked out unit. All right, as you can see, inside our vehicles, we have what we utilize as our everyday tools. Um, the same way people go to work and they have different things in their office, we have tools that we utilize each and every day. All right, so if you look inside the vehicle here, we have numerous tools that we utilize each and every day. For starters, we have a microphone. We use our mic. This is our way of communicating between ourselves and other officers and dispatch. Anytime that we need to give information or receive information, we use our microphone. We also have basically a, a portable computer in our vehicle. This is where we document incidents, we document reports. Anytime that we need to write down information, anything that's pertinent that we need to uh, write down or document or keep track of, we utilize this computer. We also have an audible mic where if we have a motor vehicle stop, we're stopping a vehicle, there's a pedestrian in the road, uh, someone riding a bicycle and we want to give them a warning, we can use this mic to speak out loud and there's a speaker up here that will communicate exactly what we're trying to transmit. We have our overhead emergency lights. This is a marked unit as I mentioned. Our overhead emergency lights, they have many different functions that, use, that we use each and every day depending on what it may be. If it's a traffic hazard, we may use some lights. If it's an emergency, we're gonna use all of our emergency lights. Our lights are on top here. They're here within the side mirror. They're here within the grill as well. As you can see, and they're in the back. All right. I'm going to turn them on just to give you an example of what it looks like. As you can see, we have red, blue, and white lights which indicate that there's an emergency. All right. Anytime that you would see these lights and we're heading to a call, you're going to see the lights and you're also going to have an audible warning. As you come to the rear of the vehicle here, we have shotgun rack, and we have a rifle rack. We carry around and patrol a shotgun and a rifle. We also have a go bag in the back of our vehicles where we keep extra ammunition, where we keep uh, medical equipment. We also keep a tourniquet in case of emergency we can help out. And we also keep uh, just additional equipment that we may need in the case of an emergency. All right, as we go to the trunk of the vehicle, I'm gonna show you some more equipment that we use on a daily basis. As I said, this is our office. Everything that we need on a day-to-day -day basis, we keep in this vehicle. Anything we're gonna need throughout the course of our shift, we wanna keep in this vehicle. As you can see here, this is our medical bag. This contains an oxygen tank. It contains nasal, we have gloves, we have masks. We have, we have everything that we need in this vehicle to make sure that when we arrive on scene, that we can take care of the patient and whatever kind of care that they need. Um, as you can see here, we have a box of flares. These flares are utilized if we have any kind of accident or any kind of emergency where we want to flare off a particular area. This is, this is where we keep our flares back here. We also have a defibrillator. We use this defibrillator, as you can see on the inside here. Every time we start our shifts, we always turn it on to make sure it's functioning properly. We have pads that we can place on the patient to make sure that everything is working uh, the way that it should be. We also have in here, we have a crowbar, we have a rope. If we ever need to gain access into a house or a door or building, we have a, a sledgehammer here that we use. We have crowbars in here. We have various tools that we need. We have various tools in here we need to make sure that we can get the job done in a safe, efficient manner. All right, here we have our ballistic shield. A ballistic shield is used anytime we have an active shooter situation, whether it's gunshots or whether it's just people throwing different debris and things at us, we would utilize this shield. All right, this shield protects us. It's a barrier that will protect us from whatever the enemy may be doing to try to hurt or harm one of us. All right, as you can see here, as we move around to the passenger side of the vehicle, this is where the bad guys go. All right, anyone that's arrested for any kind of offense, uh, anything that's criminally has occurred, they're going to be arrested and placed in the rear of the vehicle. Before we place them in the rear of the vehicle, we make sure we check their person, make sure they have nothing in their pockets, nothing in their shoes, nothing in their shirts, nothing tucked away, because we don't want them to be able to come in here and have anything that could eventually hurt or harm us. 
Once they're handcuffed and placed in the rear of the vehicle, we do place a seatbelt on them to make sure they're safely secure in the vehicle. As you can see, the vehicle has plexiglass. This is called a half cage, a half cage. We only can have one arrestee in here at a time, one person at a time. So what does that mean? That means if I have a motor vehicle stop and I have three occupants that are gonna be arrested at one time, I need three vehicles. It's only one occupant per vehicle, one occupant per vehicle. Now you may be asking yourself, why do we have a half cage? Why do we have plexiglass here? Why do we have plexiglass up here? That's so that they cannot spit on us, so they cannot kick this out. You also see we have bars on the windows. When I first started here in 2010, some of our vehicles, the old Crown Victorias, didn't have bars on the windows. What would happen? You would have someone handcuffed in the back. They would maneuver themselves. If they weren't seat belted properly, they could kick out the rear window. We don't want that to happen. We don't want them to hurt themselves or hurt us. So as you can see, it's a half cage where they're secure back here. There's bars on the windows so they can't kick the windows out. If you have any further questions, you can contact me. My name is Officer Wright, East Brunswick Police Department. Thank you for watching in today, and please be safe.